one time when I was in the fire department, there was a car accident. And so the, with the fire, with the fire department, I went to the fire department, we had our big fire engine and you know, we went to the, we went to the accident scene and, uh, it, it wasn't a very serious accident, but you know, the driver was injured, but the driver did have, um, his dog. And so what, what do we do with the dog? Because the ambulance is going to take the injured driver and then there's the dog. And so my, uh, my fire chief, my fire captain, he said, Rich, you, you take the dog. And I was like, Oof, what am I going to do with the dog? Cause I had like my helmet on and my big fire coat, you know, dun, dun. and so it was this little dog, <laughs> little dog. And so he was like, well, take it, take it back to the other fire truck, the smaller fire truck. So and there's all these cars, like this car, 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 cause they're waiting because the road is stopped. And so I had this little dog, you know, on a, on a leash. So basically I was walking this dog down down the road and all the people sitting in their cars are like and I'm like I'm like walking my dog as a firefighter and then the dog the dog didn't want to go the dog wanted to stay with its owner but we had to take the dog so at this point now I'm I'm dragging the dog down and you know, I'm dragging the dog down the road and and he won't so finally I I pick the dog up because you know, it's quick, it's faster to pick the dog up. And so then I'm walking down, but this dog is like, ah, you know, like, like it's a monster. And I'm like walking down the road, this dog is like, ah, and I'm like, ah, and all the drivers are like, ah, what is, what is happening? So the dog was like, ah, the dog bit me. But luckily, luckily I had my fire gloves on, my big gloves. And this dog was like, ah, 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 trying to, so finally got to the fire truck and I like opened the door and just, put him in the fire and then close the door and Okay, so um, when I graduated from university with a degree in physics, uh, I didn't really have a plan. So I decided to join the United States Peace Corps, which is a volunteer group. And uh, Peace Corps volunteers go to different countries and do different jobs. So I went to the Fiji Islands in the South Pacific, and I was a physics and math high school teacher in Fiji for about two years. Then while I was there, I decided that I wanted to live and work in other countries. So I did some research into what are some good ways to work in other countries. And uh, teaching English was a possibility, a good idea. So when I was in Fiji uh, for the like Christmas New Year's vacation, yeah. I went to New Zealand. Uh, but while I was on the trip, I had a very bad accident on a mountain when I was there. Uh, I was with a group of people and we were hiking up the mountain and then we were coming down, we were sledding down the mountain, not skiing, but sliding down. and. Um, Unfortunately, because of the way the snow had melted, there was a, um, a hole, or we would say a crevasse, like an ice hole. There was a crevasse that we didn't see, and um, we f three of us fell into the crevasse. Some, there were eight people in our group, and three fell in, and five did not fall in. And, uh, 
so then when we were missing the five people who went down they didn't know where we were so they went back up to look for us and then they found us down in this crevasse it was uh, 10 meters deep and um, then they went and got the rescue people the rescue crew and they came and they had ropes and equipment and they went down in the hole and then they got us out of the hole and then uh, we got helicopter rides to the hospital. I think it did sort of show me that, you know, life, think, uh, you can have problems in life, you know, bad things happen sometimes. So you really should try to live your life uh, as much as you can because you don't know if something bad is going to happen. to meet? So when I was uh, in the Peace Corps in Fiji uh, and, I and we finished and went back to America, uh, we had a reunion party where all the people that had been in Fiji and went back to America, we all came together in America to meet each other. And one of the people, uh, Tara was her name, Tara had been a volunteer in Fiji with me she had been Joan's university roommate mm -hmm. before Fiji. So when I was going to the reunion party and Tara was coming to the reunion party, Tara said to Joan, why don't you come with me to meet the people? Also for safety, because <laughs> it was like 10 boys uh, and like two girls. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, Tara, Tara said, Joan, hey, let's go to this reunion party, and Joel said, oh, okay, sure. And uh, so that's where we met. What is your first impression about her? I think when I first met you, I, it's okay. I said hello, you know, and I thought you were very nice. And then with time, I thought you were nicer. Mm -hmm. And But you weren't, I mean, you were there to see your Peace that is friends. true, that's true. I was there. I was there because all of my Fiji friends had come and Joan. And I didn't know Joan. I knew all my friends, so it was like, hey, how are you? Oh, hi, yes, like, nice to meet you. Hey, how are you? You yeah. know, with all my friends. So it was sort of, I didn't know her. Mm -hmm. So at first I was like, oh, you know, hi, you know, but then all my friends. And then slowly, you know, the next day, the next day, the next day, I realized that she was so wonderful. And really? Then... Well, well, no, I, you sound like... Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> you were nice. Okay. You're a nice person. That's better. That's more true. And then what, what did you... Do, like to try to persuade your students to have I mean to participate in the class well I think I think the most important thing is that I need to get my students to trust me if they don't trust me then they're not going to take a chance because they're nervous or they're shy in class and they have all these other students and they feel they don't maybe they don't know these students so they're feeling sort of alone and shy and so for them to open up and to try to communicate that's very difficult for them and they have to trust me they have to think that i'm trying to help them and so but it's very difficult because i have you know 30 students different personalities, different experiences. There's like the sports boy who's like, hey! And then there's like the computer guy who's like, mm. So I sort of have to make sure that I, I, I include all the students, 
to try to give them a chance, not just the sports boy, but the quiet boy or the, the shy girl in some ways. And that's really important. And they won't, the shy ones, they won't respond to me unless they trust me.